Okay, so this question says a function is derived, uh, defined, okay, uh, by gx equals to, there's this modulus over here, okay, and um, when we talk about modulus questions, the two most common type of modulus questions is, number one, they ask you to draw a graph, okay, it's very common. Number one, they ask you to draw a graph, and number two, they ask you to find the possible values uh, given uh, this one. So let me just, let me just go to this. Let's say uh, they ask you to gx equals to 3x minus 1. I'm going to use the same equation, but instead of <clears throat> uh, instead of uh, solving it first, uh, okay? Oh, you know what? Let me solve it first. Uh. Let me solve it first so that, so that I can talk about the graph in a little while. Uh. Okay, so let's say they say that this one g is, and then after that they say gx equals to 5. Okay, so the first thing you should know is the modulus 3x minus 1 is equals to 5. Plus. Now, the most important thing uh, is that the way to solve this one is very different from the normal way which we will solve it. If let's say there's no modulus over there, 3x minus 1 equals to 5, naturally, uh, you will know that the first thing you do is pin down the 1 over, so 3x equals to 6 and then x equals to 2. Plus. This is very natural. Okay, everybody knows how to do this. Okay, but now you have a problem you have the two pagars breaking your, stopping the negative one from going across. Okay, so because of that, you have to settle the paga first. <clears throat> okay, you have to settle the modulus. Lah. And the way we settle it now is by breaking the answer into two parts. When you open, I when I teach my students, I say this, lah, although mathematically it's not very accurate. Lah. Okay, when you open the modulus, uh, what happens to this answer is that it will break into two answers. Okay, so it will become 3x minus 1 equals to 5 and 3x minus 1 equals to negative 5. This is a very common paper 1 question that I think if you, you know, if you answer enough, uh, you'll find that it will be just the jawaban. Okay, it is a very basic question. It is just testing you whether you remember or not the rules of the modulus. Okay, so when you do this, you will get the same situation as this and this. So this one, I will just do x equals to 2. Okay, and then this one will be 3x equals to negative uh, 4. And then you get x equals to negative 4 over 3. Okay, so you will definitely have to have two answers Although it is not a quadratic equation, it is a modulus equation. Okay, that's why uh, if you read the question properly, they will never tell you uh, find the value of x. They will always say find the values of x. Okay, dalam bahasa Melayu pun sama. Cari nilai nilai x yang mungkin. Okay, because it is an indication to you that there is more than one answer. If it is just one answer, they will not write there find the possible values. They will just write, find the value. Okay, so sometimes uh, the key to answering the question uh, is actually reading the question to see whether there's more than one answer involved. And in this case, in the modulus, <laughs> it's definitely more than one answer. It's, sorry, I'm laughing because as I'm talking, uh, there are people that are coming in, that's why I have to keep admitting. I have to figure out how to make somebody a co-host. Otherwise, I'm going to be spending my time uh, admitting people in. Okay, so this is the first type of question now. But another type of uh, popular question, which involves the modulus, lah, okay, is the drawing of the graph or the sketching of the graph. Okay, sketching of the graph. Lah. So let's say, uh, example, lah, okay. GX equals to modulus 3X minus 1. Turn off your mic, please. Okay, modulus 3X minus 1, but they give you a range. Okay, so GX equals to modulus 3X minus 1. Very popular question. X is uh, dari negative 2, okay, until 4. <laughs> Sorry, until 4. Okay, now uh, you can sketch it if you want, okay, but of course the safest way uh, is to, you know, is to draw out the table. Okay, so if you draw the table, can I have a couple of people to help me with this, please? <clears throat> okay, GX. Huh? Now, most important thing is you need to remember huh, if your GX is a negative value, okay, what's going to do is going to turn into positive. Lah. So you draw the table, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, uh, yeah, can I have a couple of people to cal calculate this for me, please? If X is negative 2, what is GX? Taking into consideration the modulus already. Yeah? Yeah, so different people count different things and then just shout out. Lah. Okay, uh, x equals to what? Uh, gx equals to what? what, what? 
x is equal to negative 2 um, gx 7. Positive, huh? Mm, okay. What am negative I... lah, tapi mau dileskan. Ya, yeah, betul. Okay, next. Skip four. short answers. Yes. Four. Oh, four. The next one, seven, four. Uh, this one will be one, kan? Uh, three minus one, two. <coughs> am I correct? Three minus one is two, yeah. <laughs> Six minus one is five. Nine minus one is seven. Uh, Twelve minus one is... Twelve minus one, eleven. Okay, sorry. Okay, now once you have done that, then of course you can plot it out, lah. Okay, so you plot it out, and because it is just a sketching, uh, so it doesn't really have to be very accurate. But if you really want to be very accurate about this, uh, can lah. Okay, one. Oh, eight doesn't. Which is eight, ah? Uh? The three. The three is eight, ah. Uh? Oh. Uh, oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So this is four. So our numbers are range from seven, four, one, two, five, eight, and eleven. Ah yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna roughly draw. Okay. <laughs> this is too early in the morning for me. <laughs> Ten. And then somewhere here is twelve. Okay. So seven is about here, four is about here. Okay. Uh one is here. Okay, one and two is here, two and five, three and eight. 4 and 11. Okay, now this is the most important thing. Uh. Many people see this and then they read and then they forget. Uh. Okay, now a standard modulus graph, if the function is a linear function, uh, it will always have to somehow touch the x axis and then only bounce back. It must touch the x axis, then only bounce back. Okay, so a very common thing that I always see is people will draw, uh, they will draw like this, no, like that, and then after that, sambung macam me. Uh, cannot, uh, you need to have this in mind. When it is a modulus graph, especially if it is a linear modulus graph, no x squared, uh, just only x. Okay, then you want to make sure that the graph hits zero before going back up. It must, it must, it must, it must. Okay, it must hit the zero and then go back up. So this answer is definitely wrong. You will probably only get, uh, sketching graph is about two, three marks. Uh, you probably only get one mark just for the plots. Okay, but the shape is wrong. So you need to make sure that, okay, that when you draw this, it has to first hit the zero and then only go back up. Okay, uh, that is a safer answer. Okay, what we want to see, okay, what examiners usually want to see, well, macam lah say examiner, but what examiners usually want to see is, number one, the shape lah, it has to be a V shape. Okay, if it is a linear modulus graph, no X squared lah. Okay, I have yet to see an X squared graph that can modulus in a paper one question. Okay, paper one question, usually if they ask you to sketch a modulus graph, it will be a linear, uh, linear means no X squared, it's just X only. Okay, it will be a linear modulus graph. So what we want to see is the V shape uh, where the V, the point of the V, okay, must hit the X axis. That is the single most important thing that we want to see. Even if you get all your points correct, but it is tergantung di udara, you will get zero. Well, if it's me, lah, okay, you will get zero because you're not, you're not understanding the fact that the modulus, uh, okay, what the modulus is doing is actually, if this is a straight line, actually, this part over here is supposed to continue downwards. Right? It's supposed to continue downwards. But because we have modulus it now, so whatever that is below is going to pinda up above. Okay? So please watch out for this. Now. So make sure that whatever you do, hit the x-axis. Uh, you have the option. Now, okay? It is optional. Um, and I have yet, I don't, I really don't see many people doing this. Lah. You can find this value if you want. When x equals to, or when y equals to zero. You can lah, if you want. It's not, it's not really important. Lah. But you can lah, if you want. Okay, you, you can write there. Okay, when gx equals to zero. So modulus 3x minus one equals to zero. So x equals to one over three. Okay, you can do that if you want x equals to 1 over 3. And then you just mark down here in your graph 1 over 3. You can. Okay, it's optional. I, I don't think the marking scheme will really ask for that x value. But if you want, you can do that. Lah. Okay, just to be on the safe side. 
But again, as I said, the most important thing uh, when you are sketching a modulus graph is to make sure that there is a V shape. Okay, and the bottom of the V must touch the X axis, the single most important thing. All right, let me continue. Okay, function H uh, is defined as, okay, you're given this. Okay, five minus X over four X, and then after that X is not equal to zero. Now, um, let me go into this first. Uh, whenever you have a function, if a function has a penyebut, uh, has a has a something down there that has a number x, you need to define that x. Okay, so example, uh, there's a reason why there's this x not equals to zero, especially in your format, uh, okay, in your KSSM format, perkara ini bahkan sangat dititik beratkan. You must qualify the definition of the x. Okay, so how do you know whether x is not equal to zero? You look at the bottom down here, this 4x. Okay, so what you need to do is 4x is tidak boleh sama dengan kosong, therefore x tidak boleh sama dengan kosong. Let me give you another function now. Let's say fx equals to 4x plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, you need to... So, so ini yang kita mau tengok lah. Okay, whenever you see a situation like this, other penyebut, Okay, there is a there is a fraction, and then down there, uh, there is an x. Okay, then so you need to define that x. So how do you define that x? Okay, all you need to do is x minus two cannot be equal to zero. Okay, those of you who <coughs> understand this concept, uh, the bottom cannot be equal to zero because it will give you an undefined number. Okay, but if you don't understand, doesn't matter. Okay, just know that asalkan ada x di bawah, okay, kamu mesti kasih tulis the entire ayat tidak boleh sama dengan kosong. You pin that across, you get x tidak boleh sama dengan 2. Then you add it over here. x cannot be the same as 2. Okay, this is a very common question. Dia bagi macam ni tau. Dia bagi macam ni. Lepas itu, dia tulis x tidak boleh sama dengan k. And then they will say, find the value of k. And it's a one mark question. Okay, so all you have to do is, if you want to know how to change this to become this, you just use x minus 2, tidak boleh sama dengan kosong. Okay, in all your entire admex career so far lah, okay, in your admex career so far, this is the only time where you will use not equal to, <laughs> okay, yeah, this is the only time where you will say not equals to zero. It has to be, okay, at the bottom must be not equals to zero. Okay, whatever the bottom is, okay, whatever the bottom is, it the entire bottom cannot be equal to zero, then you pindah-pindah sampai kamu dapat bentuk macam ini. Okay? Because sometimes, okay, functions, uh, example, uh, another function, uh, 4x squared minus 1 over x. Okay, and then x tidak boleh sama dengan, let's say, h. So find the value of h. Okay? And this is very simple uh, because you know that the entire bottom tidak boleh sama dengan kosong. So that means h must be zero. Okay, we always do that. Another one, 4x squared minus 1 over 2x plus 4. Tidak mau, 2x plus 3. Okay, x, sorry, x tidak boleh sama dengan uh, hkj, for example. Okay, same thing. Find the value of j. 2x plus 3 cannot be the same as 0. You always start with that. 2x plus 3 cannot be the same as 0. Then you pindah, 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 pindah. Okay, you will get x tidak boleh sama dengan negative 3 over 2. And when you compare this and this, you can conclude that j is negative 3 over 2. Don't miss this one mark question. It is too simple. Lah. Okay, I think I feel that it is too simple. If you do enough practice on this kind, actually this is very easy. There's nothing really much. It's just conceptual. Okay, you just have to understand that kenapa ada, why is there this, you know, this line at the back there? Okay. Likewise, okay, let me tell you this likewise thing. Uh, and I think this is even more important. Okay, first of all, I have to wrap this. Lah. Let's say uh, you, are, uh, you are asked to find a function. <clears throat> okay, let's say you are asked to find a function. And after that, you susapaya already find a function. Uh, and then, uh, <laughs> sorry, I have to wrap all this off first. I wish there was a clear board option, but unfortunately, no. Uh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> okay. So let's say, okay, uh, you already find the function lah, 
Okay, you already find the function, it's susah payah, and then after that you say, okay, the final answer is fx equals to 2x over x minus 1. And then uh, you proceed to write your two lines uh, to proudly show that you have already finished answering. Uh, this is wrong. <laughs> okay, let me tell you, no matter what you've done, uh, this is wrong because it is incomplete. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm especially emphasizing this because in your syllabus, uh, it is uh, it is something that they are musti kamu tekankan. Okay, musti kamu, you know, you need to know this lah. Okay, whenever you have a function that is a fraction, uh, okay, that has an x at the bottom, you need to define the x that is undefined. So you need to do an extra step. Oh, disebabkan di bawah sini ada x, so I have to do this one extra step. So x tidak boleh sama dengan satu. Okay, and then you write that answer over there. X cannot be the same as one, and then only you will get the mark for the answer. Okay, I am saying this because I recently found out lah. Okay, I recently found out that this is something that, uh, in KSSM, uh, it is uh, it is really ditekankan. So I want to remind you about this lah. Okay, don't miss out on the one mark just because you forgot to define. But having said that, uh, not everything needs to be defined, you know. Okay, take a look. <laughs> you need to look at this one. What if it is fx equals to 2x over 3? Nothing to define here because the bawah, there are x. There's no x at the bottom. So don't go and, oh, okay. Uh, means uh, so say, uh, the bottom uh, must cannot be equal to 0, you know. 3 is not equal to 0. What can I do? Oh, okay, la, done. <laughs> then you go and write 3 is not equal to 0. Okay. I will definitely put three question marks when I ask you. Yes, I know that three is not equal to zero. So why are you telling <laughs> why are you telling me this? Three is not equal to zero. Wow. Okay, it's like saying that, oh, okay, it is dark now, it's going to rain. It's very obvious. Lah. Okay, so you don't not every function has to do this, but definitely functions young other x di bawah pecahan. Okay, likewise. Begini ya, 2 over 3x plus 4, nothing ah, habis. Okay, if this is your answer, itu lah itu. Because there is no x at the bottom. Okay, there are the x di bawah. That's all you need to remember. <coughs> oh dear. <laughs> Seplo 25 sudah, and I'm still on this question. Okay, 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 okay. let me continue ah. <laughs> okay, I promise to finish paper 1 by today lah. Okay, fine. Membebel, betul. Okay. Uh, so the function yada yada find the this astaga find the inverse function okay inverse function very easy lah so you take the original function five minus x over four x if you are taught by uh, if you are taught by another teacher and your other teacher teaches you another way please follow that teacher okay I'm just a I'm just a you know a yang sana sana bawa bawa punya teacher lah okay you can follow this method if you want if you don't want please follow your other teacher's method okay what I usually do is saya kasih jadi y. Okay, I take the original one and then saya kasih jadi y and then I pindah-pindah. Okay, all I need to do is I change this until I get x equals to yada yada. That's my final goal. Let me see, uh, can I do this? Uh? Uh, oh yes, correct. <laughs> I can do. Okay, so 5 minus x equals to 4xy. Okay, then you pindah this across and pindah this across. I will get uh, minus x. Oh, you know what? This is so ugly. Tidak mau. Kejap, kejap. No, it's very ugly because all my writing is all over the place. Uh, 4, 4xy. Four uh, okay, I'm going to move this x across. So 5 equals to 4xy plus x. Okay, and usually in situations like this, you want to factorize out the x. Huh? So x, you have 4y plus 1 equals to 5. Okay, remember uh, our end goal is to get this x alone. Okay, on one side. And usually, it will involve factorization. So, you will get 5 over 4y plus 1. And then finally, you... <coughs> sorry. Finally, yeah, you change it to... Uh, you, change it, you change the y to x. Lah. So, this x changes to become the original one that you want. Okay, the, the inverse function. Okay, and then this will be 5 over... 4x plus 1. Okay? And that is still an incomplete answer. Remember what I said just now? There is an x at the bottom. 
So you have to define the x. Okay, so x cannot be equal to negative 1 over 4. Work out the map. Okay, work out the map on your own. I already explained it just now, but you will get this. Huh? X tidak boleh sum dengan negative 1 over 4. But, okay, sorry. Huh? But the question is not asking for x. Huh? They're asking you to replace the x with the negative 1. Okay, I'm just saying this. I, saya hanya tulis begini because if the question said, find the value, find the function of the inverse, find the inverse function, which is h minus 1x. Okay, then you need to make sure that you're writing this at the back. Okay, compulsory, yeah, must. Okay, but since that x is equal to negative 1, so let's substitute. Lah. Okay, negative 1 equals to 5 over 4 times negative 1 plus 1. You will get negative 5 over 3. Okay, but again, lah, the basic skill here is how to find the inverse function. Okay, uh, this is how I usually teach my students. So I can ambil the original function equals to y and then I pin up, pin up, pin up, supaya I get x alone. Okay, and that's usually how I do it with my students. Lah. Okay, you, you, can, it's, uh, you can do it any other way you want. Okay, uh, depending on who your teacher is. Okay, second question. Find the values of x such that the original function equals to the inverse function. Okay, original function is 5 minus x over 4x. Okay, we start there. Okay, this is the original function. Equals to inverse function is 5 over 4x plus 1. 5 over 4x plus 1. Now, once again, uh, notice this. The values. Okay, you're looking at the values of x. So, which means you're looking at possibly two answers. Okay, at least two answers. And whenever you see two answers, there's only two possible situations. Satu, the adalah modulus, which we saw just now. Okay. Or secondly, it is a quadratic equation. Okay. And quadratic equation means EQN and EQN is, you know, negative B plus minus 4, all those things are working and factorization. All right. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Cross multiply 5 minus X times 4X plus 1 equals to 20x, 5.4x. Okay, so you, this one you get 20x, sorry, 20x, yeah. Okay, uh, plus 5 minus 4x squared minus 5e, yeah. Sorry, what am I doing now? 20x plus 5 minus 4x squared, okay, yeah. <laughs> Minus x equals to 20x. Okay. And from here, I think if you have done enough admits uh, for the past one and a half years, you should already know what they expect when you see this kind of this one. You need to make it equals to zero. And then after that, you need to solve it lah, either by factorization or uh, by formula. Okay. I mean, yala, you can use EQN, la, but you need to show that, you know, that Wayang step. La. Those of you who are my students, you will know what is the Wayang step. La. Okay, you pin up, pin up, pin up, you'll get 4x squared plus x minus 5. Okay, equals to 0. Okay, sorry, I'm taking a lot of shortcuts because, you know, I want to make sure that I finish the other two questions. Otherwise, the people in 5ST will start killing me. <laughs> okay, so uh, you factorize this. Or you can use EQN if you want. If you use EQN, you will get x equals to 1 and x equals to negative 5 over 4. Make sure that you translate this into, uh, this is what, 4x plus 5. Okay, you make sure that this is shown. Okay, in all, well, in almost all uh, factorization questions, in almost all quadratic equations questions, you need to either show this or at least, uh, x equals to negative 1 plus minus 1 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 5 over 2 times 4. Okay, either show this or show this. Okay, if you don't show, chances are you probably won't get that final mark. Okay, especially in paper 2. I, I need to emphasize that this is, especially in paper 2, this is a very important thing. Okay, to show that uh, if, like, you know, I always call this the Wayang step, like, because you already found the answer using the calculator. 
Okay, but you need to show the examiners that I did not use the calculator. Okay, yeah, I know. Exams are really, they just, they just teach us how to cheat better. <laughs> so terrible. Okay, second question. Uh, so diagram six shows a straight line QS. Okay, you have a QS over here and a circle in the center Q form a moving point P. Okay, keyword, uh, moving point. Okay, when you see a moving point, you need, to, you need to think of the word locus. Okay, and when you think of the word locus, you're talking about the distance formula. Okay, uh, distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared square root. Okay, so locus always brings this into mind. Now you need to use the distance formula. There's a ratio over here. So you kind of know where this is going. Okay, but let's take it one step at a time. First thing they're asking you to find is the equation of the line QS. This one. Okay. Two things we need in order to find the equation. Number one, we need to find the gradient. Number two, we need to have a point. Okay, the good news is Along the line QS, we have two points. So you can use any one of the points you want. But definitely the gradient uh, you need to find. Lah. Okay, so the gradient, sorry, I'm going to start. Huh? So the gradient is uh, 6 minus 4 over 6 minus 7. Okay, you will get negative 2. All right, and then use the point. Okay, I'm going to use the R point just because I like the letter R. <laughs> okay, so 4 equals to negative 2 times 7 plus C. You can find the value of C. Lah. Okay, this is a very standard step. Huh? So you find C equals to 18. And you will, and so you find that the equation of the straight line QS, okay, the equation of QS is Y equals to negative 2X plus 18. Okay. One thing that is very common uh, that I always see in a lot of students is they find the gradient and then they find the intercept, right? And then they stop there. <laughs> For some weird reason or another, uh, they're like, oh, okay. Saya sudah cari kecerunan, saya sudah cari pintasan, maka saya berhenti lah di situ. Okay? Guys, one very important thing you know, especially for those of you that are struggling to pass, huh, you need to make sure that you read the question properly and you answer the question. Okay, those of you that I teach, huh, you know that I always say this. You never answer a question, huh, hey, what are you eating? Huh? My name is Marcus. You're not answering the question. Question is asking you, what are you eating? And then you answer, you know, my name is Marcus. Cannot be. If the question is asking you for an equation, give an equation. If the question is asking you for a coordinate, give a coordinate. Don't settle uh, for, oh, saya sudah dapat jawapan. Okay? Doesn't mean uh, kamu dapat jawapan, bahkan means kau sudah dapat, kau sudah jawab soalan tau. Huh? Okay? It doesn't mean that you got the answer, it means you have answered the question. You may have the answer, but the answer could be the answer to a wrong question. Make sure you always answer the question. Okay? Very, very important. Alright, so the equation is negative 2x plus 18. Coordinates of point S. Point S is given over here. I'm going to rub this off because again, it's so messy. So the good thing is they give us the ratio. Okay, ratio QR is 1 and uh, RS is 3. Okay, now when you have a ratio, you have to go back to that formula, which is the lompat lompat formula. Uh, those of you in ST, you will know this. Well, I hope that you <laughs> remember this. Okay. Um, Basically, is the center, the sort of center, la, okay, the center point, okay, is equals to the two side points, and then you jump across, jump across. Okay, so I'm going to give S as X and Y. Okay, and the first jumping uh, is this 7, 6, and X. Okay, and remember when they multiply, they multiply with the opposite ratio. So the X must multiply with 1, and the 6 must multiply with. 3. Okay, so the formula will be 7 equals to 6 times 3 plus uh, x times 1 over 1 plus 3. You add the two ratios at the bottom. Okay, if you don't remember this formula, this is the time to remember it. 
Okay, this is the time to, you know, oh ya lah, saya tahu ini, saya tahu ini formula, tapi saya lupa sudah. Sekarang kita guna masa ini untuk mengingat kembali. Okay, this is the lompat-lompat. I would show you the original, uh, the original equation, but it is so complicated that I feel that it's such a waste of time. Okay, so I'm not going to do that lah. Okay, I, you can figure out the original uh, formula if you want, but I'm just going to leave it at this. Okay, now when you calculate this, you will get x equals to uh, 10. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Huh? Okay, now when we calculate the y, we do the same thing. I'm going to use blue color, y, 4, and 6. 4 is the one that you should start with. Okay, 4 equals to, and then, you know, the other side, multiply by the other side. Lah. So 6 times 3. Okay, this 6 multiply with this 3 ratio. Okay, plus this y coordinate multiply with the 1. Okay, dia mesti bendarab dengan yang sebelah. So y times 1 over the same thing, lah, 1 plus 3. Or 3 plus 1, lah, doesn't really matter. Okay, now when you solve this, you will get y equals to negative 2. And again, nah, okay, again, I see this happen too often to A plus students and also to students that always fail at maths. I always see this. They get the value of x, they get the value of y, and then they move on without actually answering the question. Question say what? Coordinate of point S. So you have to write, okay, S at least, lah, at least write S equals to 10 and negative 2. If you don't want to write the coordinates of S are, tak payah. but this one definitely you need to write. Okay, I have seen this time and time and again. People forget because they think, oh, saya sudah cari koordinat X dan koordinat Y. Maka saya sudah jawab soalan. Tidak. Okay, unfortunately, exams have rules and some of these rules are very uh, less than desirable. Okay, <laughs> so, you know, we sometimes have to follow all these nonsense rules. Okay, all right, last one. Equation of the locus P, yeah? okay. <laughs> Sorry, let me rub this off first. Okay, locus P is a circle. Okay, so this is the moving point. Okay, locus P. Uh, you know what? Let me let, let's do a short recap on the locus first. Lah. Okay, we need to talk about the locus. Okay. Now, whenever we come to this one, right, I need to warn you uh, that this one akan satu kehilangan akan terjadi ini. Suddenly something will hilang, but <laughs> let's see what happens. Lah. Okay, in your syllabus, there are only three types of locus that you need to know. Okay. So locus uh, ada tiga jenis. So the first type is okay, one moving point, okay, one fixed point, one fixed distance. Means the distance uh, is already fixed. Okay, so this locus, okay, so the moving point is this. Uh, sorry, uh, the fixed point is this. Fixed point is in the center. Okay, the moving point is this and then wherever the point moves uh, okay wherever the point moves okay the distance uh, the distance is fixed point fixed distance okay so the only possible locus that is possible for this is that the locus has to travel in a circle okay so this is the locus that means uh, this moving point uh, Okay, the moving point has to travel in a circle so that it fulfills this condition. Dia boleh bergerak, the fixed point is staying and the distance between the both of them are, is always the same. Okay, that's the first locus. Second locus is one moving point. You always have one moving point. Lah. Okay, one moving point. But this time you have two fixed points. Okay, and the distance... Lah, is at a ratio. Okay, one moving point, two fixed points, and distance is at a ratio. Now, those of you who are taking physics, uh, you will know this much easier. <laughs> Sadly, you will know this much easier because you have done this already before in chapter three, gravitation. Okay, if you have done the activity uh, where you have two fixed points and one moving point, uh, you will know that the locus is actually an ellipse. Okay, the locus is actually it is because uh, fixed points, what color? Blue. So two fixed points, fixed points one, fixed points two. Okay, and then 
there is a moving point. Uh, what color is the moving point? Red color. Okay, moving point. Okay, and the point always moves uh, such that it is always at the ratio. Okay, it is always at the ratio. I'm going to give the ratio X and Y. Lah. Okay, so the locus uh, is actually, oh, sorry, you know what? Uh, sorry, okay. So there are two distances. Okay, the two distances between this. And as long as this moving point is moving, uh, okay, this the two the two ratios, sorry, the two distances and the ratios are always maintained. Okay, if you did the gravitation punya activity uh, on Kepler's first law, right, you will know that this shape is actually not a circle, but it is an ellipse. Okay, it is an ellipse. So the moving point moves over here, so it will not be like really a circle, but it is an ellipse. So this is the locus. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the ratio is this is x, and then this is y. Okay, there is always a certain ratio, x and y. Okay, so it is an ellipse. Now the third one is probably the most easiest of the lot. Lah. Okay, the third one is one moving point again, okay, because locus is a moving point, okay, two fixed points, <coughs> two fixed points, okay, but the distance, uh, okay, between the two points is the same. There is no ratio, the distance is the same, okay, so let's consider this, uh, uh, fixed point, okay, Fixed point one, fixed point two, okay, then you have the moving point, okay? So whatever it is, the distance, okay, needs to be the same distance. Here and here, okay, is the same distance. I'm going to call this, uh, you know what, x and x, la, x, la, okay, same distance. Now, the only way that this moving point can move, okay, and maintain that same distance, uh, is to be is to be the midpoint is to be the what do you call this a perpendicular bisector okay so this is the only locus uh, which is a straight line okay a perpendicular bisector now when you talk about perpendicular bisector you need to think about two things lah. number one you need to think about midpoint how to calculate the midpoint and number two, uh, how to get the equation of straight line. Okay, equation of straight line. When you are talking about the locus as a circle and locus as an ellipse, okay, in these two, okay, you will probably get, uh, I'm going to give you a very rough format, okay, format of answer will probably look something like, ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals to zero. There's an x squared, there's a y squared, there's an x, there's a y, there's a number. Okay, so if the locus is a circle or an ellipse, this is probably the kind of answer yang kamu akan dapat. Okay, but if the locus is a perpendicular bisector, you will get the equation of a straight line. And these are the only three locus that you need to know at admax form 4, form 5 level. As far as I know, <laughs> okay, I just thought locus, so I know this. Okay, so there's only three locus. Okay, but all three uh, work around the same principle. We talk about the distance formula, always the distance formula. Okay, so you need to know when you read the question, look at the question. Is it a fixed point? Is it two fixed points? Is it a fixed distance? Is it a ratio distance or is it the same distance? Because all these conditions will tell you what kind of locus you're looking for. So when we come back to the question, this question, the locus has actually been given to us. Lah. Okay, the locus is a circle. So the locus is actually given and it is a circle. Okay, they've already given it to you. It is a circle. So you want to find the locus of the point P. Okay, the first thing you need to do is, do you have the fixed point? Yes, we have the fixed point. Okay, do you have the distance? No, you don't have the distance. But can you calculate the distance? Take a look. Okay. Can you calculate the distance between the fixed point and the moving point? It is actually the jajari, bahkan the radius. 
Okay, and so we can use this to calculate the distance. 6, 6 and 7, 4. Okay, I'm going to move over. Huh? All right, so the distance, 6, 6 and 7, 4, right? <laughs> I better write this down. Okay, 7 and 4. It's equals to 6 minus 7 squared plus 6 minus 4 squared square root. Okay, you will get uh, square root of 5, is it? Yeah, okay, you get square root of 5. Okay, astaga, sorry, 5. Okay, so again, uh, the moving point, sorry, the fixed point, the fixed point uh, is 6 and 6. The moving point is x and y. And the distance is square root of 5. And when we find for locus, uh, we always find, we always use the distance formula, okay, which is x squared, sorry, x minus 6 squared plus y minus 6 squared equals to the square root of 5. Oh, oh, sorry, square root. Okay, distance formula. We use these two points, the distance must be equals to square root of 5. Okay, so of course, the first thing we do is we get rid of the square roots because we don't need them. And then we expand these two. So you get x squared minus uh, 12x plus 36 uh, plus y squared minus 12y uh, plus 36 equals to 5. Okay, then you pinda, pinda, pinda. Yang paling penting, dia mesti sama dengan kosong because remember, I said just now that this is our format of answer. Tak semestinya semua elemen adalah, okay? But usually there's at least the x squared and y squared. Sometimes the x and the y are missing. It's possible. But definitely the x squared and y squared will definitely have. Okay, so we are looking at x squared plus y squared minus 12x minus 12y plus 67 equals to zero. And this is the equation of the circle. Okay, this is the equation of the circle, which uh, our the very smart people <laughs> that uh, did this syllabus, uh, they hit this, they don't know it's sembunyi lah. Actually, uh, you learn the equation of circles and ellipses uh, at you know higher levels, like uh, engineering maths, uh, you know, A-level maths, you learn all this. Okay, so even circle uh, got equation one actually. Yeah, you think that wow, this kind of uh, is already so hey, but x cubed, wow, that uh, Okay, there's way more interesting shapes and every shape has an equation. Okay, and this uh, locus is just an introduction uh, to, the, to the weird, weird equations there are. Okay, but uh, actually locus is an easy topic. You just have to know what kind of locus you are looking for. And there are only three at, at your current level so far. Okay. I think I can finish this last one if I don't mumbabel so much love. <laughs> but should we give it a go? Okay, let's finish this love. Otherwise, uh, ST is going to kill me. Yeah? So it's so slow. Okay, tangent theta equals to P and P is this one. And then you have 0 to 90. Okay, first thing you need to note is that it is first quadrant. So we are safe. Whatever answer you get, it's always going to be positive. Okay, this only comes as a danger if there is more than one quadrant involved. But since it's only one quadrant, it's only the first quadrant, you don't have to worry so much about it. Kita boleh, you can virtually just let it go. Lah. Don't even bother. Okay? Now, usually, when I see this kind of question, okay, my first instinct uh, is to form the triangle. Okay? The my first instinct is to form the triangle because tangent theta equals to P also means that tangent theta equals to p over 1. So I can basically form the right angle triangle. Okay, I have theta over here. Okay, p is opposite, right? Yeah, so this is p, this is 1, and this will be p... <laughs> Sorry, somebody has to help me out here. p squared plus 1. Okay, p squared plus 1 square root. Okay, and I can find virtually any, uh, any trigonometric ratio I want. Lah. Okay, this is usually how I would approach this question. But when I saw this, the first thing that I saw that it was only two marks. Yeah, I'm like, if it's two marks, uh, I'm very sure that I'm very sure that I don't need this triangle. Uh. Okay, and when I look at the question, oh, rupa rupanya betul. Because they are only asking for cotangent. The relationship between tangent and cotangent is, dia terbalik, bukan? 
So tangent theta, sorry, cotangent theta is equals to one over tangent theta. And so if tangent theta is P, therefore your answer will be one over P. That's why it's only one mark. Okay, tangent squared theta. Okay, if tangent theta is P, you square the function, uh, okay, you will get P squared. Okay, also another mark. I need to mention this, lah, okay, walaupun sama I need to mention this. Uh, I, I think it's also good for everyone. Uh. Tangent squared theta and tangent theta squared uh, are two different things. This is the same as tangent theta, the whole thing squared. Okay, this is, you never learned this yet. You haven't learned this yet. Lah. Okay, and you will probably never learn this uh, unless you take up engineering maths or, you know, you go to A-level or STPM maths, lah. then you will look at this. But we never do this. Okay, we have not learned the square of an angle yet. Okay, what we have learned is the square of the function. Okay, you need to differentiate this. Okay, we are squaring the function. So when you square the function, it is the same as the original function. You square the whole thing. So this and this are the same thing. This and this are not the same thing. Okay, they are very, very different. That's why I can say since tangent theta is P, so this will be P squared. Okay, take note of this. Very, very important. Very common mistake. Okay, cos theta equals to K. And this is in first quadrant. Find secant theta. Okay, cos theta, secant theta are good friends. Lah. So secant theta, uh, secant theta. Huh? Yeah, secant theta equals to 1 over cos theta. So you get 1 over k. This is a no-brainer. Okay, you just have to know the relationship between sine cos tangent, secant cosecant, and cotangent. Yes. <laughs> okay, the, the very basic 6. Okay, basic 6. Okay, sine cos tangent. Um, <laughs> why is it cosecant, secant, and uh, cotangent? Okay, the last one. Uh, solve the trigonometric. Okay, solve the trigonometric. First thing you need to know is you need to look at the this one. All four quadrants are involved. So you, everything comes into mind. Okay, let's start with this. Uh. 3 sine 2x minus 2 cos x equals to 0. Okay. I don't have time to go into what are the steps to solving, but the most important thing is you need to make it one function only. In this equation, there are two functions, and the functions don't even have the same angle. Okay, so it's like a double whammy. First thing you need to know is you need to change this. Okay, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So 3 times 2 sine x cos x. Okay, minus 2 cos x equals to 0. Okay, when you multiply it in, you get 6 sin x cos x minus 2 cos x equals to 0. Now, answering this uh, always takes a little bit of experience. Uh, but when you look at it, you will see that you can actually factorize this and you can factorize this as well. Okay, and so what you will get is you will get 2 cos x, okay, and then inside here will be 3 sine x minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, and so we have converted uh, the original equation into a new equation where it is only one term and each part of the term uh, has a single function. Okay, so we can say that 2 cos x equals to 0 and 3 sin x minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, you kind of split it apart. Lah. Just like when you do factorization, right? x plus 2, x minus 1 equals to 0. So x plus 2 equals to 0, x equals to negative 2. x minus 1 equals to 0, x equals to 1. Begitulah kita buat. Okay, now, again... <laughs> Okay, let's settle this first. Huh? Cos x equals to 0. And this one will be sin x equals to 1 over 3. Okay, and we... Eh, positive? Yeah, positive. Okay, so we always ask ourselves the same question. What quadrants are involved? What is the base angle? And what is the angle in the quadrants that we spoke of in the first step? I repeat. Huh? What is the quadrant involved? 
what is the base angle? Base angle you use calculator to find. Uh, somebody please find the start finding the base angle for me. Uh, I'm going to start asking cos x zero and sin x equals to one over three. Okay, and then uh, the third one is what is the angle in the quadrant that you found in step one. Okay, so I'm going to start with cos zero. Uh, sorry, cos x equals to zero. What quadrants are we talking about? Oh, cos x equals to zero. <laughs> sorry, cos x equals to zero is no quadrant. Sorry, uh, this is special angle. Uh. So this will be x equals to 90 and 270. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> My dog is very lonely because I'm talking to all of you and not talking to him. Okay, cos x is zero, x equals to 90 and x equals to 270. <laughs> sorry. Uh, eh, 90, uh, 90 and 270. Yeah, okay, so it's special values. Huh? Let's go to the next one. Sin x equals to one over three. We're talking about which quadrant? Quadrant one and sine is quadrant two. Okay? Quadrant one and quadrant two. Okay, base angle for this, please. Somebody? What is the base angle for sine x equals to one over three? Two decimal places, maybe? 19.471. 19.471. Okay. So in the first in the first quadrant, it'll be the same 19.471 degrees. Okay, but in the second quadrant, you need to do a little bit of calculation. Okay, go and revise again. Now. How do you find the angle in the second quadrant? But you will get uh 160. 160. Yeah. Okay, 160.5200. Uh, 529. I think so. About la. Okay, something like this. Okay, if you are taught to use uh, degree and minute, nah, kalau kamu digunakan degree and minute, you will get Q1 equals to 19 degrees 28 minutes and Q2 equals to 160 degrees and 32 minutes. Okay, depending on uh, this one, I teach uh, 5ST and I tell them to use decimal places, but if you want to use degree and minute, you are also welcome to do so. Okay. Uh, so let's continue. Huh? We're going to look at this paper two question. Uh, the first thing that I want you to notice uh, is that uh, it is a two and a half hour paper. Okay. So paper one is two hours and paper two is a two and a half hour paper. But in paper one, uh, okay, it's two hours and there are 15 questions altogether. Okay, 12 plus three. Lah. So the 12 is compulsory, paper one. Uh, <clears throat> okay, paper one is 12 plus three. So 12 is compulsory. And then the three, you have to choose two questions to answer. So all in all, you have to answer 14 questions in two hours. Okay, and sometimes these questions will have A and B. Sometimes these questions will have just one question alone by itself. Uh, even the marks are different. Some of it can be as little as three marks and can be as high as seven marks. Okay, but the total for paper one, section A, uh, is uh, eight B minus. Okay, I know that section B, <laughs> section B is sixteen marks lah. Okay, this is uh sixty four marks. Okay, section A is sixty four marks for a total of eighty marks altogether. Okay, but in paper two, okay, so in paper two, you will have uh three sections. Okay, three sections. There'll be section A, the section B, and the section C. Now, in section C, there is four questions, choose two. Okay, there's four questions, choose two. And uh, for section C, uh, it's pretty much standard. Lah. Okay, for section C, uh, the four chapters uh, that are definitely coming out is solution of triangle, index number. Okay, and then the other two chapters are in form five, which is uh, motion in a straight line. <clears throat> and linear programming. Okay, but these two chapters we are not covering, or at least for my students, uh, I didn't cover these two chapters because uh, I feel that we wanted to do this revision more. So I told them, okay, section C, you make sure you answer this solution or triangle and index number. Okay, uh, if we have time, uh, like, you know, after the trials and if you're very bored of asking <laughs> questions that have to do with uh, and maths, then we may consider going into these two new chapters. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, section A, there's seven questions you have to answer all. Section B, there's four questions you have to answer three, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, choose all, four, answer three, and then four, answer two. Okay, so, <coughs> so there's a mistake over here. Lah. Okay, there should be three, yeah, figures. So, uh, so four, choose three, four, choose two, this will be seven, okay, all you have to answer. So in two and a half hours, uh, okay, in two and a half hours, you have to answer 12 questions. Seven plus three plus two. Okay, so in two and a half hours, you have to answer 12 questions. And uh, generally, uh, the section B and section C are the bigger chunk of questions. Lah. Okay, yang lebih berat usually comes from section B and section C uh, as compared to uh, section A. Section A also berat, lah, lebih berat daripada paper one, tapi uh, not as berat as section B and section C. Okay, so have this in mind uh, when you go into paper two. Okay, you need to set your mind that, oh, okay, paper two, I have to answer, you know, 12 questions. In paper one, I have to answer 14 questions, <coughs> but they are short questions. Lah. Okay, so let's be wary of this. Lah. All right, let's begin now with the first question. We have the first question as simultaneous equations. Okay, in this chapter of simultaneous equations, you only have two types of equations, two types of simultaneous or systems of equations lah. okay that you need to know how to solve the first one is this kind where there is a linear equation and a non-linear equation <clears throat> okay uh, and what makes a linear equation a linear equation is that the unknowns uh, yang dia punya anu itu, the letters uh, the power is only power of one maximum power is one okay so we call that a linear equation and they're not combined together. Lah. Okay, so if they are combined together like this, for example, lah, although the power is one, but because they're combined, okay, it is still considered a non-linear equation. <clears throat> okay, and the reason why I'm focusing on uh okay, we must understand what is linear and what is non-linear is so that it makes our life much easier when we want to answer later. Okay, always identify which is the linear and which is the non-linear equation. So the first type of question okay, is a simultaneous equation between one linear equation and one non-linear equation. Okay? And usually, if this is the kind of question, there will be only two unknowns. Okay, two unknowns, one linear and one non-linear. The two unknowns memang lah x dan y. Okay? And usually, the two unknowns will have four answers. Lah. Okay, two for x and two for y. Now, the second type of question is the simultaneous equations that involve three linear equations, okay, but three unknowns and only three answers. Okay, and generally it's x, y, and z. <coughs> okay, generally the, <coughs> the unknown is x, y, and z. So there are only two, two types of simultaneous equations that you need to know uh, in form 4 and maths. Uh, yeah, form 4, form 5. Lah. Okay, which is one that is involving linear, non-linear. And the second one that is involving three linear, okay, but there are three unknowns. So for example, 3x minus y plus z equals to 4. Okay, example. So this is a linear equation because the letters are standing alone by itself and they are power of 1. Okay, so three linear equations, but you have three unknowns. So slightly different method of solving. But for our purposes of discussion today, we're going to talk about how to do the linear and the non-linear equation. <clears throat> okay, so it will be uh, 4x minus y. <laughs> I wish I remembered this. 4x minus y plus 5. 2x squared. So, sorry, uh, somebody please read for me. This 2x squared. Plus y square minus 3xy equals to 14. Equals to 14. Yeah. Okay, the first one is 4x minus y plus 5 equals to? Zero. Equals to zero. Huh? <coughs> okay. Um, all right. So let's do this. Huh? So 4x minus y plus 5 equals to zero. Do that. So First of all, we identify the linear and the non-linear. Okay, the most important is this. So this is linear, this is non-linear. And you know it's non-linear because other x squared, other y squared, other x, y, but double. Okay, other per x, all these are non-linear. 
Okay, non-linear maze, they are not straight line graphs. Okay, so the first thing you do is you take the linear graph, uh, linear equation, okay, and you ungkapkan lah. Okay, you express it in one letter. Okay, so 4x minus y plus 5 equals to 0. Let me move the y across here to make things easier. 4x plus 5 equals to y. Okay, and this is what I want. I want to express one of the unknowns okay, in terms of another unknown. Okay, so it's a y. And what happens to this after that is I will substitute the y in here and in here. Okay, and so what I will get, <clears throat> okay, what I will get now, what I will get is 2x squared plus, okay, then I'm going to do the 4x plus 5, lah, 4x plus 5, sorry, there's a slight delay, <laughs> okay, squared, all right, minus 3x, and then I'm going to put the y again, 4x plus 5, and then we're going to get equals to 14. Okay, so this is a very standard movement, a very standard uh, working. Lah. Okay, if you've done like you know 50 of these questions, and you will know that it's too saja. Lah. Okay, and this usually, yeah, okay. Uh, if you look at the marks, okay, it is a generally it's a five mark question. Okay, generally, lah, generally it's a five mark question. Oh, sorry. And then the other thing is uh, they are going to ask you for four decimal places. Okay, we see that they are asking you for four decimal places, which means that you know uh, that uh, you need to involve the formula in this. Okay, the idea that there is four decimal places uh, means the formula is involved. Okay, x equals to negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. <laughs> and I'm reminded again of the TikTok video. Lah. It is the formula that after form 5, uh, you never use. You can count the days until you use it like you want. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's continue. Huh? So now that we have everything in X, okay. Uh, sorry, I should mention this. I should, lah. I should mention this. Okay. At this point, lah, okay, you will have already had two marks. Lah. Okay. You express it in one letter, you get one mark. You substitute it and you get another mark. Okay. Now maybe some of you are asking me, uh, why do we have to do y? Why can't I do x? Can if I want to do x, look at what happens. Okay, 4x minus y plus 5. Okay, so equals to 0. 4x equals to uh, y minus 5. X equals to y minus 5 over 4. Now, if you are given the choice uh, to substitute this or this, then which one will make more sense to you? Obviously, we want to choose the easier one. Lah, kan? Why you want to make your life so difficult by doing this? Just because you're so stubborn and say, I want X, I want X, I want X. <laughs> okay, so learn to be flexible. Okay, choose. There's, if there's an easier way, we use the easier way. Okay, because if you, if you substitute this in, okay, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. Lah, especially if you have a weakness for algebra. Lah. Okay, so try not to... Um, we say mempersiasuikan diri lah. Jangan sampai kamu siasui lah. Okay, very sad lah. Because I always see this happen. Okay, 2x squared plus, then we expand this lah. 16x squared plus 40x plus 25 minus 12x squared minus 15x. I'm going to bring the 14 across. Minus 14 equals to 0. <coughs> 16, uh, 40, hold on, uh, 25. 12x squared minus 15x. Okay, so what happens over here then is uh, we're going to simplify it. Lah. So 2, 16, and 12. Uh, 18 minus 12 is 6. <coughs> uh, yeah, okay, 6x squared. And then you have the 40 and you have the 15. So you have plus 25x. And then 25 minus 14 will give you plus uh, 9, 9. Oh, no, 11. Okay, plus 11 equals to 0. <laughs> Sorry, there's a slight delay in my... Okay, now, at this point, okay, if you have done enough of these questions, uh, you will know that there's only two ways to do this. Okay, you either factorize or you use formula. Okay, and because the question already say, uh, give your answer to four decimal places, right? Don't even think about factorizing. Just go straight into 
the formula. Okay, and so you just put in the formula x equals to because we're using x, huh? so we say x equals to lah. Okay, minus twenty five plus, uh, plus minus, uh, twenty five squared minus four times six times eleven over two times six. Okay, at this stage, then you can EQN. Okay, so you get x equals to this and x equals to this. Can somebody EQN this for me, please? Sir. So, yeah, actually factorize more. Negative one over two. Oh, huh? yeah, okay. Negative one over two and? Negative 11 over three. Uh, can I have it in four decimal places? Is only got four decimal. Places. Negative 3.66666. <laughs> Seven ma. Okay. <laughs> now the reason. Okay. okay. Uh, okay. So probably, probably lah. Okay. Probably there's a little bit of error with the question. Uh, the answer is correct. Okay. The answer is correct. It's negative one over two and negative eleven over three. You know, so I was looking at the answer. You can factorize now. Okay. But uh, that being said lah, I'm just gonna use the opportunity lah. If the question specifically says okay four decimal places, istaga. If the question specifically says four decimal places like this, okay, um, you know, it's definite, usually, okay, usually it is formula, okay, but in the case of this question, I think they may have made a mistake, okay, I'm very sure that my calculation is not wrong, okay, I think they may have made a mistake, so we're just going to assume that we just give our answer as a fraction, <clears throat> okay, let's just give our answers as fraction, uh, so that we don't worry about this, okay, but if let's say lah, okay, if let's say you can factorize, uh, uh, you can also choose to do the factorization. Okay, so this would be 2x uh, plus 1 and uh, 3x plus 11 equals to 0. Either this or this. Okay, now let me tell you, uh, so far, 5 marks, right? So where does the fourth mark, the third, fourth, and fifth mark come in? Okay, the third mark uh, comes in here. Either this or this. Okay, and then the fourth mark is these two together is the fourth mark. Okay, that's the fourth mark. Now, may, let me explain to you why. Uh, <clears throat> why is it uh, that the fourth mark uh, is in this section? Okay, because examiners today are very smart. Okay, they know that a lot of students, what they do uh, is from here, from 6x squared plus 25x, they jump and get this one. Okay, I have seen countless number of people uh, that lose the fourth, lose the third mark because they didn't show this step. Okay, and so I'm telling you, if you are my student, uh, I don't know about Pon Lee, uh, Pon Lim, okay, but if you are my student, uh, okay, those of you with high ST, if you have a quadratic equation and you don't show me the factorization or the formula, you will not get that mark. Okay, I make it very clear. Uh. Okay, uh, because it's important. You are supposed to actually, uh, do you know that when you answer admits, uh, you're supposed to answer the questions, okay, without the use of the calculator's programming. You know that the EQN, okay, the EQN, uh, okay, the famous EQN that everybody always uses is actually one of the calculator's programmable uh, programs. Uh, okay, one of the calculator's programs that you're actually not supposed to use. Okay, which is why if you jump from here to here straight, uh, you will lose that third mark. Okay, and I think it is too simple uh, to, to just let go of that one mark. Uh. Come on. Uh. You get this answer, then you just work your way backwards. Uh, you know, because wujudkan ini dan wujudkan ini balik. It's just an extra step that you need to take. Okay, so make sure uh, that you are showing me once again, make sure that you are showing me the, uh, the, the, the third mark. Okay, that is, I think, the most one of the most important things like, that people tend to uh, people tend to forget. So strange that even though I've updated this app, I still face this problem. Maybe it is an incompatibility thing. <laughs> okay, now once you've gotten these two, then you substitute. Lah. Okay, that's the next one. Substitute. Okay, x equals to negative half and x equals to negative 1, 11 over 3 into the linear. 
Okay, always substitute with the linear. I don't go and pandai pandai go and substitute with the non-linear. Okay, 4x plus 5 equals to y. Okay, so 4 times negative half plus 5 equals to y. You'll be able to get y equals to 3. And then the other one is 4 times negative 11 over 3 plus 5 equals to y. You get here y equals to negative 29 over 3. Okay, there is a slight error with this question. Lah. Okay, because uh, this question says four decimal places, right? But actually, <coughs> if, it is, <coughs> if it is four decimal places, uh, all four answers, lah. okay, one, two, three, four, all four answers, okay, will be, uh, will be all decimal places. But in our case over here, you have one answer like this, okay, with no decimal places at all, right? Okay, so it's probably a question error, lah. Okay, so getting both of these correct is one mark. Now, one of the most famous questions uh, that I constantly get, uh, okay, is that a lot of students, uh, okay, take a look at this. Uh, okay, a lot of students, when they look at this, they see, wow, this is five marks. Uh, macam tidak berbaloi, macam saya patut dapat tujuh marka. Okay, atau saya patut dapat lapan marka. Uh, because, you know, I work so hard and write so many numbers and letters. Okay, let me tell you uh, why, how the marks are given. Marks are given uh, for skills that you have learned in admeds form 4 and form 5. Substituting like this, uh, okay, substituting like this uh, is a form 3, it is a form 2 skill, you know. Who's going to give you marks for a form 2 skill? Nobody's going to give you marks for form 2 skill. We don't teach you to substitute in admeds. Okay, admeds is uh, substitution is form 2 skill. So there's no mark given uh, for anything that you learned or anything that you apply uh, in Form 2 and Form 3. Okay, but in order for you to get the mark, you have to apply the things that you, know, you learned in Form 2 and Form 3. Even this, expansion, uh, after you expand this and you expand this, right? A lot of students, they say, hey, I deserve this mark over here. How come uh, I expand so... Saya betul sudah saya kembangkan, you know? But I don't get the mark. Okay? Because expansion is a skill that you learn in Form 3. Okay, it is, it is actually an insult to you uh, if I give you a mark uh, for something that you learn in Form 3. You, know, you should be getting marks for things that you learn in Admets Form 4 and Form 5. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it is insulting. Apa ini? Ini kertas Admet Form 4, Form 5, tapi dia bagi saya marka untuk kemahiran tingkatan 3. Okay, so, so that's why the marks are only 5 marks. Because they give marks for things that you learn in Form 4 and Form 5. Not for things that you learn in Form 3. Okay, be aware of this. Huh? <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next question. Half an hour, baru satu soalan. Okay, uh, given this one, yada yada, find the turning points. Okay, the word turning points uh, should be a very big, uh, very, very, very big clue for you. Okay, turning points are uh, only appear at one chapter. Okay, which is form five, chapter two, differentiation. Okay, when you see the word turning points, uh, you need to know that it's definitely okay differentiation. Okay, find the turning points and determine whether each turning point is a minimum or maximum turning point. Okay, first of all, how to determine the turning points? Turning points are determined when dy dx equals to zero. Okay, the value of x. Lah. You will get the values of x. Okay, that's the number one. Number two, how do you determine whether the minimum point or maximum point? Okay, then you have to consider d2y dx2. You differentiate the second time. If it is more than zero, okay, <coughs> sorry, substitute x, huh? substitute x into d2y dx2. And then if you get the answer more than zero, it is a minimum point. Okay. If you get d2y dx2 is less than zero, it is a maximum point. Okay, there is another way to determine this, right? The one where you have to determine the gradient and then after that zero and after that the gradient again, right? So the gradient is uh <coughs> if the gradient is negative zero positive, then it's a minimum point. If it is a positive zero negative, it is a, a maximum point. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. The shortcut way, and usually people do this, is the is the second uh, the second level of differentiation. 
Okay, let's uh let's do this. Uh, x cubed minus four x squared plus five x plus one. X cubed minus four x squared. Oh no, I forgot to do. Y equals to x cubed minus four x squared plus five x plus one. Should be correct. Okay, so the first thing you do is you differentiate lah. Okay, dy dx. So you get three x squared minus eight x plus five. This will give you one mark. Okay, differentiating it correctly will give you one mark. Now to determine, uh, okay, to determine turning points. Okay, dy dx must be equals to zero. This is unnecessary, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm just writing it down just to remind you uh, Why am I substituting dy dx equals to zero? 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. Okay, from here, okay, from here, since this is a quadratic equation, you know that you're going to get 2x values. Okay, EQN for this, uh, EQN this for me, please. 5 over 3 and 1. Okay, 5 over 3 and 1. Don't forget to put the yn step. Huh? Uh, sorry, uh, 3x minus 5 and x minus 1. Both positive. Huh? Yeah, both positive. Okay. So to determine the turning points, the turning points are upper below x something like 5 over 3 and x uh, equals to 1. Okay. But points needs to be coordinates. Okay. So substitute into the original, this one. Lah. Okay. So y equals to uh, x cubed, 5 over 3 cubed. Yeah. Okay, 5 over 3 cubed, uh, minus 4 times 5 over 3 squared, plus 5 times 5 over 3, plus 1. And you do the same thing again, lah, with the number 1 as well. Okay, y equals to 1 cubed, minus 4 times 1 squared, plus 5 times 1, plus 1. This has to be easier, lah. 1 minus 4 plus 5, uh, minus 3 plus 5. To three, okay, this <laughs> should be three. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. What is this one? Huh? Can somebody calculate this? It's a very weird number. Seventy-seven over twenty-seven. Okay, seventy-seven <laughs> over twenty-seven. So again, uh, turning points must be coordinates, huh? So you need to write your answer in the coordinates. Okay, so turning points are um five over three and seventy-seven over twenty-seven. Okay, and one and three. Okay, so turning points need to be coordinates. The question doesn't say coordinates, but you still need to give the answer in coordinates. Lah. Okay, now we have two turning points here. How do we know which one is minimum and which one is maximum? Definitely one minimum, one maximum. You cannot have both maximum. Because how can you go to another maximum if there's no minimum in between? Right? Must be maximum. Okay, so... Let's go to the second level of differentiation. If dy dx is 3x squared minus 8x plus 5, okay, the second level, d2y dx2 will be equals to 6x minus 8. Okay, so we substitute. Lah. Okay, substitute x equals to 5 over 3. Let's do this first. So d2y dx2 equals to 6 times 5 over 3 minus 8. Uh, you will get, can I say 2? 2, right? Yeah, 2. You should get 2. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Okay, 2. So, <clears throat> since okay, d2y dx2 is more than 0, positive, kan? positive is 2. Lah. Okay, since d2y dx2 is more than 0, when x equals to 5 over 3. Okay. Okay. Therefore, 5 over 3 and what's that point? 77 over 27. 77 over 27 okay, is a minimum point. Okay. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> even in maths, uh, even in admets, especially in admets. Uh, Okay, you have to, you know, you have to be aware that you need to write sentences. You know, don't just assume that the examiner will understand. Uh, the moment you end here at two, okay, that's the answer. Uh, 
D2 by DX2. Let the examiner, you know, sendiri fikir lah. Cannot lah. You cannot do that. Okay. This in itself uh, is one mark. Because you've proven. You need to prove and then you need to conclude from your proof. Apa maksud kamu punya proof ini? So what? So what if D2 by DX2 is more than 2? That's why you need to write the sentence. Oh, since D2Y DX2 is more than zero, it's a positive number, so the point is a minimum point. Baru like examiner will say, oh, begitu ka, then give you the point. Okay, now we do the same thing for the other point. Okay, the other point is x equals to one. Huh? Substitute x equals to one. So D2Y DX2 <coughs> equals to six times one minus eight, which will be negative two. Okay, and then you write the same sentence again, except that since the number is less than zero, okay, since d2y dx2 is less than zero, therefore, what is the point? One and three. One and three is a maximum point. <coughs> okay. Okay. Do you know now that, uh, because I'm looking at the marks, like it's only three marks, right? For this question. The other question was four marks. Okay, so let me give you how the marks are. One, um, sorry, uh, hold on now. Uh. One, okay, then this one, obviously, the, you know, the factorization. Uh, and then uh, three and then four. Okay, each turning point correct. Okay, that's four points. Now, for this one, how is the mark given? Nah? You differentiate correctly, definitely. Lah. Differentiation nah, always got mark one. Okay, because differentiation is a form, is an admit skill. So definitely there's a mark there. Okay, so in this question, one mark for differentiating correctly, and the second mark for this sentence, and the third mark for this sentence. Okay, so substitute again, nah, like I said. Lah, Substitution, huh? got no mark one. Memang got no mark. Because it's a form three skill. Okay, it's like, ugh, it's not worth giving the mark for a form three skill. Okay, we only give marks for the form four skill. So, so get used to this. Lah, huh? And never leave anything to chance. Okay, don't just assume huh, that when you get the answer as a number, huh, means you have already given the answer. Doesn't always work that way. Lah. Okay, I hope that two years of learning and maths huh, has taught you that sometimes the explanation is more important in the calculation. Okay, especially when you go to higher level maths. If any one of you have any dreams of continuing into higher level maths, uh, you will un you will soon understand uh, that actually the numbers don't mat don't matter as much as the, the explanation behind the numbers. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm aware that uh, not everybody here is from ST and there are other there are people who are other classes. Uh, I need you to make sure, I mean, if you notice uh, that in this revision session, uh, I didn't revise how to differentiate. Uh, and I will not, okay? Because how to differentiate uh, is such a long thing. Uh, if I want to explain one by one, uh, I will never be able to move on from the questions. Uh. So if you don't remember how to differentiate, please go and know how to differentiate, okay? Especially the one that involves the chain rule, which is the one that a lot of people always forget. Okay, chain rule. Huh? Chain rule is the one where, example, y, see, now so I have to teach. <laughs> say, let's say, for example, uh, y equals to uh, 3, 2x plus uh, 1 to the power of 5. So we use chain rule, right? Okay, the inside, outside one. Huh? Okay, so, you know, the dy, dx huh, will be, you bring the 5 down, so 5 times 3 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. And then after that, you differentiate the inside. When you differentiate the inside, you get 2. So you multiply by 2. <coughs> okay, so the answer for this will be uh, 10 times 3, 30. Lah. 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. Okay, go and learn. Lah. Go and relearn this again, the chain rule differentiation. Among the more famous differentiations, lah, okay, is the simple one and then this one. The chain rule differentiation very 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 important okay young y equals to u v and y equals to u over v then i don't always see being asked um maybe paper one okay maybe paper one question but 
I don't really, I don't always see it differently. Okay, because it's just a skill. <coughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. I think this will be the last question of the day. Three questions again. So Marcus and three questions. Okay, so let's go. Uh, an entrepreneur has a hotel and has three vacant posts, which are hotel managers, chefs, and security guards. There's a vacancy for hotel manager, six vacancies for chef, and four vacancies for security guard. The total salary will be 25100 when there are employees who apply the job and work for a month. If there are three vacancies for hotel manager, seven for chef vacancy, and a vacancy for security guard, total salary will be 29000 I know where this is going to be. Total salary of 24 <sighs> Okay, so form a system of linear equations in three variables. Okay, so this is also simultaneous equations. Okay, that uh, that is involving the second kind. Remember, I told you the first kind is. Oh no, <laughs> the first kind is this. Okay, one linear and one non-linear. Now the second kind. Oh sorry, the first kind is this like one linear, one non-linear. Okay, the second kind. Uh, will be the one that involves uh, three, three linear equations uh, and three unknowns. Okay, this, uh, there, this one. <clears throat> okay, this is the one that I was saying. Okay, three linear equations, three unknowns, so you will have three answers. Lah. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's, uh, let's, Okay, let's represent each one uh, with a letter. So I'm going to call the hotel managers X, I'm going to call the chefs Y, and I'm going to call the security guards Z. Simply because uh, that's the way they are arranged. Uh. If you want to put the chef as X, and the hotel managers as Y, and the security guards as Z, also can. Uh, nobody is going to say anything. Uh, okay, you decide. Uh. Okay. Now, first one is six chef, four security guard. And sorry, a vacancy, yeah, one, one hotel manager. So we're talking about X plus six Y plus four Z. And okay, the total will be 25,000. Oh, you know what? I need to write this down. Okay, X plus six Y plus four Z equals to 25,100. Okay, that's the first one. Second one is three for hotel manager, seven for chef, and a vacancy. So one, three x seven y, and one z is twenty nine thousand one hundred. Three x seven y plus one z equals to twenty nine thousand one hundred. Okay, fine. The last one. Ah, 24,400. Will be two hotel managers, 2x, 5y, and 3z. 2x, 5y plus 3z equals to 24,400. <coughs> okay, now among all the simultaneous equations question, this is usually the most easy. Lah. Okay, this is usually the most easy and uh, depending on which method that you like. I like that. I like the multiple elimination method. Okay, so let's say one and two and three. Yeah? So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to want to deal with the X. Lah, okay, my choice, lah, my choice. I'm going to want to deal with the X. In this case, uh, it may look like the substitution, it makes more sense. Lah. Okay, lah, fine. Let's do substitution. Lah. We start from this first one. Uh, X plus 6Y plus 4Z equals to 25,100. Okay, I'm going to have the X alone. So X equals to 25,100 minus 6Y minus 4Z. Okay, and then I'm going to substitute it into 2 and substitute it into 3. Okay, so when I substitute it into 2, what I will get okay, is... 3 times 25,100 minus 6y minus 4z plus 7y plus z 
equals to 29,100. Okay, and then the other one is if I substitute it into 2. Okay, so I'm going to get 2x, oh sorry, 2 times 25,100 <clears throat> minus 6y minus 4z plus 5y plus 3z. <laughs> plus 5y plus 3z equals to 24,400. Okay, you settle each one one by one and you do simultaneous equations. Do I have to, do I have to show this? Uh? It's very long. Uh? I like my last do this. Okay, fine. 3 times 25,100 is uh, 75,300. 75, oh, sorry. 75,300 yeah. minus 18y, thank you. Minus 12z plus 7y plus z equals to 29,100. Sorry, okay, stop complaining, stop complaining. Do, 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 do. Minus 18y plus 11y will be minus 11y minus uh, 11z equals to uh, negative 29100 minus 75300. 46,200. Now, let me see if I can divide this by 11. Can. Okay, so I divide everything by negative 11. Now I'll get y plus z equals to 4,200. Hold on. Yeah, 4,200. 46200 divided by 11. Yeah, 4,200. So first equation. Oh, sorry, fourth equation. Now, let's settle this. <laughs> this is uh, 5,200 minus 12y minus 8z plus 5y plus 3z equals to 24,400. Okay, so this will give us, <coughs> sorry, minus 7y, minus 7y minus 5z, yeah, equals to 24400 zero zero minus 4022. 24400 zero zero minus 50200. Zero zero. 25800. Okay. Uh I wonder whether we can divide this by seven. Oh no, we can't. We have we have to leave this alone. Did you get this right? Minus 12 plus 5. It looks correct to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks correct to me. Let me just change it all to positive. Equals to 258. Zero, zero. Okay, this equation five. Now let's bring four and five together. So seven y plus five y equals to two five eight zero zero. And this okay. Once you come to here, this is a sorry. Once you come to here, this is a maths form three question already. So everything after here is no mark one. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm very sorry to say that everything after here is no mark because this is a one, two, three, four, five, six question. Yeah, it's a six mark question. Okay, it's a six mark question. Uh, I'm going to let you do this on your own, but I'm going to get X equals to three, five, zero, zero, one mark. Y equals to two, four, zero, zero, one mark. And Z equals to one, eight, zero, zero, one mark. Okay, six marks questions. Huh? Each answer is one mark. So when, where are the other three marks? Lah? Okay, so first mark is this one. You substitute the x inside here correctly, it's one mark. Okay, you form the equation each side is another two marks. <clears throat> okay, this part, okay, which I am skipping, uh, okay, because there's a lot of steps over here, no marks at all, uh, because again, as I said, it's a form three skill. You learn simultaneous equations uh, with two unknowns and two linear unknowns uh, in form three. So definitely no mark there. Okay, the, the this one is much longer. Lah. Okay, but I just want you to know how the marks are distributed so that you know uh, to be very careful. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, and, and actually, uh, this is the interesting thing. Lah. Okay, and I don't really suggest this. Okay, but if you want, you can do this. If you remember your maths, uh, maths form 4, form 5, when you learn matrices, lah, okay, you know matrix? Okay, you can actually do this in a, in a matrix form. 
No, okay now. Why is that? This will be uh, 1175 equals to 4200 and 25800. Okay. And the best part is you can even use your calculator to calculate this. Uh, sorry, you can even program your calculator to do this and give you the answer directly. Okay, but I'm not going to teach you that last. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, if you know, if you like to do the matrix, however, la, whichever way you do it, la, there's no marks there, man. Okay, however way you do it, there's no marks there because it's either things that you learn in mathematics or things that you learn in form three. So maybe no marks there. Okay, I want you to be aware of this. So if there's a shortcut method, and you jump straight from here to here, okay, uh, it is not, I don't suggest this. Lah, okay, I don't suggest that, that you go straight from here and then you immediately give me the answer. Okay, because the question that is on the examiner's mind will be, how do you get this answer? Where do you magically appear these numbers from? You still have to show your working. Lah. Okay, so all in all, just to remind you, just to remind everyone, especially those who are very dependent on calculators, huh? okay? Humans must be smarter than the calculators. Full stop. Okay? Humans are smarter than calculators and must be. Okay? The calculator can help you, but you still have to show the working. Don't make it so obvious that you're so dependent on the calculators. Okay? Because it won't work well for you. All right. 